Good morning everyone, it's Nishti here, Special Scientist for Children and Parents and Happy May. Happy May and Happy Mental Health Awareness Month. I just thought to use the opportunity to share with you why I'm so interested in mental health and why I decided to become a mindfulness teacher. Because there is obviously a story behind it. There's always a why. Well, in my life, there's always a why. So, and I want to share with you, I've got some books here that I want to share, you know, some of my favorite books. There is one here that I've lent it out to someone, so I don't have it, um, but I'll share with you just everything mental health. So grab a cup of coffee and have your questions ready. And you're more than welcome to comment below. And let's get started. Let's talk about mental health. So I remember when I started my journey uh, to become a dietitian, I remember very early on, I knew I wanted to work in pediatrics. And I remember the dietitians I used to work with, they were already qualified. So we were on placements in hospital. They were like, oh, you don't want to do pediatrics. I was like, oh, why? Because you are parenting the parents you're literally having to look after the child and the parent. And I was like, okay. I didn't think much of it. I was young, naive, you name it. But I followed my heart. I followed my heart and I don't regret that I'm a pediatric dietitian and that I work with both children and adults. But I did notice when I started my career in pediatrics that there's a lot of as a dietitian, you're not just dealing with the nutritional side of things. There's also the emotional side. And I don't think our degree has prepared us for that. We are not prepared to be able to help people with all the other things that's going on in their lives. So I just remember there are these three, four parents particularly, who would constantly ring the office when I was working in the NHS. And they would always needed guidance, reassurance, always constant, constant, constant. And I just thought, what what is actually going on here? You know, we, we have sorted out the, the, the issue in terms of we have prescribed the, the formula they need. I also work with type 1 diabetes. We have um, ensure that they understand carb counting, they have all the tools available. Why are they constantly ringing us? And I just thought, okay, there's something deeper going on. And there was one parent, I remember it very clearly. She was ringing up to twice a day. And one day I said to my manager, I'm going to go out and see her in her own home. And she was like, oh, you're brave. I said, I need to see what's going on because she's ringing all the time. Surely there's something else happening in the household that we're not aware of. I'm not afraid to go straight into the core issue of, of things. And I will talk to you about why that may be about my own personal experience. So I went out to see this mom and I just clearly remember it like it was yesterday. They she was struggling not with her child she was struggling in her marriage because i did ask her i said is there anything else going on here is there anything else because you know your son is thriving look he's following this centile he's this he's that and then she broke down and she said um, my husband and i are on the verge of a divorce and and i remember being sat there with her and actually i, I get goosebumps even now because it takes courage, isn't it, for someone to open up about these things. And I sat with her for a while and we had a chat. And I don't remember what I said. And I'm sure there was nothing I could say that could make things better. But I was just listening to her. And I realized then that, that being a dietitian and working with parents in particular, even working with adults, is so much more than food and is so much more... It's a holistic approach we need to come from. And I always thought that the mind-body aspect of my care was lacking. I thought, I can't just talk about 
food or milk or uh, you know carb counting or uh, the, there's something else going on here so that really spiked my interest working with parents and just seeing how as well parents can project their own fears and anxieties onto their children i see it now as well lately i've had a client whose son has been eating perfectly fine he has cow's milk protein allergy and he's perfectly fine he's he's growing well he's eating well he's drinking well but he's not drinking and eating according to her expectations and the fear in this mom has is, is actually been one of the worst cases I've seen so I've even queried um, whether she has postnatal depression the fear and anxiety oh but what if he doesn't grow well or what if this uh, everything's what if what if so you see we tend to focus on the future rather than being in the moment that's where mindfulness comes in and that's why I'm super grateful that I've qualified as a mindfulness teacher because I can actually help parents now to come back to the now. Back in the days, I wasn't sure how to guide them. I was like, oh, everything's fine, everything's fine. They don't want to hear that. They need another type. They, we need to come at parents from another angle. And I think I, I do that now. Um, and I do offer mindfulness sessions because I do and I am honest with parents and I say you are parenting from fear you're parenting from fear and it's not helping you or your child and dietetically nutritionally your son or your daughter is perfectly fine so actually we need to also make sure that emotionally we're not putting on all these fears and anxieties and expectations onto our children because it can cause problems as well, right? So this this aspect of, of parenting from fear and unconsciousness, as I call it, is uh, really what got me interested in what's called conscious parenting. Now, I have read all Dr. Shefali's books. She's a clinical psychologist. I actually recommend her book to most of my clients. The Awakened Family. I, I've, I've given all my books away to my friend, Dr. Shefali's books, but they have helped me personally as well. They are just game changing. Game changer for parents and for non-parents because they really show you how to have healthier relationships. And it's just, it's Oprah, Oprah class, classes these books that Dr. Shefali have written as revolutionary. And they are really a revolutionary way of looking parenting. Because often we are told to fix the child when actually Dr. F Dr. Shefali comes at it at a different angle. And she says that the child comes into our life to raise the parent. And see, I'm not a parent myself yet. So, but I have parents <laughs> and I see how they they put all their fears and expectations and desires onto me and my siblings. And they didn't parent from what is what is your best interest and who are you authentically, my child? No, it was like, this is what society says you need to do to be successful. This is who you need to marry according to our culture. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. But it wasn't, they didn't raise me consciously. And I am still an advocate for conscious parenting and conscious parenting is really about parents raising themselves without sounding rude here <laughs> sometimes i feel like people can sort of um back off when you say this word but actually it's it's so revolutionary it will really change how you how you look at your child relationship because you will be able to see that most of the, um, the the drama, the arguments around the household actually has to do with your own expectations, your own fears from your own um, um, parents. That pattern, you know, that comes from generational of 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 trauma. Really, trauma is not just sexual trauma, physical trauma. It can also be emotional trauma. 
And all that can be handed down to our children unconsciously if we are not aware of it. So I am an advocate for conscious parenting, allowing our children to be who they came into this life to be and not putting all our emotional baggage onto our children. That's really what conscious parenting is all about. So I also want to share with you my own sort of journey um, into this you know, interest in the mind, really. And it's because I left home very young, very young. I come from a very traditional household and I grew up in a very liberal country, completely opposite ways. <laughs> it's funny, in, in our house, we had a different life to what was out there. Um, and I have always been a dreamer. I've always valued freedom and living my own authentic life. And I left home very young and it's unheard of really in our culture to do that. Well, back then it was. And um, it was tough. I lost a lot of people on the way. I didn't really speak to my family. It was very difficult. Um, but it was all worth it. It was all worth it. And, you know, sometimes, you know, as we know, when you go through a storm, there are rainbows at the end. So I, I just started to really get interested in, become interested in the mind and, you know, and, and how, how to live my best life, really. And I came across, I think when you're ready, these things present themselves to you. And I think I was ready to hear about all these books. So, for example, the first book I read, read was The Power of Now. I don't have that right now. It's by Edgar Tolle, spiritual teacher. Uh, and The Power of Now, but also this book, amazing. I can highly recommend them. The Power of Now, I remember when I, when I read it first time, I didn't really get it. And then second time around, I got it. And now I listen to the podcast almost every day because every day I learn something new. And it's really about living your life in the now because that's all we have right now. And when we are anxious and depressed, it's probably because, as we know, we are in the future most most of us are in the future and we are very, very poor at living in the now. And our thoughts can take us off on a tangent. And before we know it, we are 20 years ahead. <laughs> Whereas right now, everything's actually fine. So this power of now, this ability to be more aware of my thoughts and me controlling my thoughts also comes through the practice of meditation has really changed my life and and because i saw the benefits and i felt more empowered i continued i have just been on this journey and i still am and i love it absolutely love it because there's nothing more empowering than feeling good and when you feel good you want to feel more good so I don't think I have a perfect life. I'm, I, I, I go through storms just like you do, um, but I've become better at coming back to the present moment and appreciating what I have at this moment in time. So uh, another book that really has helped me a lot is The Power of Intention by Dr. Wayne Dyer. I used to listen to him all the time. I would wake up before going into work. I would listen to Wayne Dyer. On YouTube gosh when you think back or oh, I when I think back I have really come far and and you can too you can too you know taking control of your mind starts now <laughs> and it starts with little things you do every day filling yourself up with powerful books and, and information I don't ever listen to the news because I can read it if I want to I I am very, very mindful of what I put into my mind. The books I read, the, the, the TV I don't really watch, but when I do watch, it's, I'm very conscious of what I put into my mind. And even the people I hang out with. I am very conscious of who I, you know, share my energy with. And... Whether it's a family member or a friend, if you feel that you're being deprived every time you're around them, 
it's time to set boundaries. Oh, boundaries. I never used to have as many boundaries as I have now. My boundaries are getting better. I'm very boundary, but I, I want to be even better at it. I think boundaries is undervalued, you know, boundaries, even in terms of the thoughts you think, you know, putting a stop to all the the limiting thoughts and beliefs and going back into the past and thinking about the future. And we need to come back to the present moment. This is where life is and it's shaped from the present moment. So when I started the journey, I didn't really understand much of all of it. But as you as you continue, you just you understand more and more because it is quite overwhelming I will say you know all these books and I, it, it was like it wasn't like overwhelming in the sense that it was it was um, draining to do it but I did have to work really hard to understand it and now I I very much it's, it's part of my life it's part, it's part of my daily life so I think this journey of mine has also helped me to be able to help other people as well. And, um, and I think providing a holistic approach to care for, you know, for Nishti's choice to be able to do that, I think it's a game changer because I think too often we, do, we focus on the superficial part, but we are afraid to dive deeper. And although I'm not a clinical psychologist, I still think the, there is room to explore as, as, um, as a healthcare professional. I think we can really make a difference if we, if we dive a little bit deeper with our clients and we find out what else is actually going on in their lives. So in, uh, in honor of Mental Health Awareness Month, I believe I will be sharing more this month. And if you do have any questions related to mental health, please do let me know. And I hope you have a fabulous present moment living month of May and forevermore. I see you guys in the next video.